Yesterday we took care of sanding the side rail. Today we're going to focus on the legs and the bottom side rail. Why don't we get started with these legs? There are three faces that we're going to concentrate on sanding. The two outer faces and where this side rail plugs in. For now, we're not going to sand this part of the leg. And you can see this is all in the same flat plane. So we're going to wait until this whole subassembly is glued up. That's when we'll flatten this and take care of this particular surface of the leg. We are going to sand this surface of the leg, but I want you to look at this. We're going to be particularly careful not to remove the wood where this side rail intersects the leg. And so when we sand this, we're probably going to stick with 220 grit. Now back here, where this bottom rail plugs in, it's a little bit less of an issue because we've got lots of wood surrounding it. We still want to always be a little bit cautious where a third of the wood has been removed, not to remove too much wood to dish out this area where the shoulder impacts the leg. Okay, <clears throat> that leaves two remaining surfaces to talk about, and that is the outside faces. Those are going to get sanded through to complete finish, starting with coarse grit, moving through the grits, as typical that we've talked about uh, for the other parts. I really hate to interrupt the music of Ennio Morricone, but uh, I'm going to uh, talk about what's going on here. I'm rounding the foot over uh, to make that soft down there. You'll see me switch there from 120 to 180. Um, and this, this surface is in pretty good shape. Uh, I'm going to go back to 120. That round over needs a little touch up. Okay, once I get that blended in, I'm going to go back to, to my 180 grit here. And I'm going to let this run in, in, in real time so you can get an idea of how long it takes to sand the side of a leg. Well, thank you very much for the applause, but actually I have a little more sanding to do. You'll notice that I'm using 220 grit, and that's the only grit I've sanded over that mortise, because anything more aggressive than that would take away the wood at the joint, because a third of the wood is gone. All right, so we're going to pencil up for the last grit, 320 grit. And we can tell when we've sanded through the scratches of 240 grit. All right, so we're going to finish up the 320 here, and then we're going to flip the leg over, and we'll start the whole process again. Now from here, we'll just speed the video up.
As I was sanding this piece, I noticed that it, there were some real problems, and I got my scraper out. And you can see the surface is so different when you scrape it. And then back to the sandpaper. Now that all the surfaces have been done, it's time to deal with the rounded over edges. In this particular leg, there was no round over on this at all because you couldn't get a router in a double curved surface. The way I deal with that is I will sand a flat straight across. And the reason why I do that is it's easy to get it equal all the way. So I'll look at it, dust it off. And what I'm looking for is just this chamfered edge that is the same width all the way across. And once I get that, then I can blend that into a round over. So I've come down in grit now to 180. I just, I cut that flat with 120. And now I'm blending that flat into an eighth inch round over. I'm going from side to side. I just want it to look like all the other roundovers on the straight sides. Go down to 220 grit. Two, I see, keep saying 220. 240 is what it is. Now I'll take a eighth of a sheet and uh, fold it in thirds. That gives me three surfaces that I can use. And now blend it by hand. Again, I've talked about roundovers before. I want it to go from a flat surface into a perfect eighth inch radius to the next flat surface. I know it's out of the video there, but I'm working on the toe at the foot. I'm going to go to 320 and finish it off. And this is just to polish it into the other surfaces that are already sanded to 320. A lot of times I'll, I'll put a towel down over the vise once I've gotten to this stage. I know you don't see it here, but it's always a good idea to, once you're close to finish, you want to protect your sanded surfaces. Now we'll go to the next round over and start the process again. The same steps that we used on the, on the real time are happening right here. Correcting anything, making an equal size flat, blending that flat over into an eighth inch round over, going down through the grits and blending it finally with 320 to the finished piece. Okay, so there's our finished piece. I'm just checking out that, that toe, those smooth little roundovers. And there is our finished leg. One down, three to go. Okay, and so now we're on to the bottom side rail, part D. There's not a lot we need to worry about with this part. There's a lot of uh, uh, mortise, so we want to be careful not to f uh, dish out those areas. But other than that, we're just flattening each of the sides. You see here, we start out at 120. Pencil it, go to 180, pencil it, go to 240, and pencil it, and finish it at 320. Now I'm going to uh, put a towel in the vise to protect those sides we just sanded, and we'll run through these other flats. Now, you can see all we're doing is we're sanding the flats. I'm going to take care of the roundovers once all these flats are down to 320, and we can take it out of the vise. 
and just use the towel as our our backer. And we'll start with 220 and just ease those roundovers. Doesn't take much. There's not a lot of wood there. And then down to 320. Great, so I'm just going to use my finger now uh, to test these roundovers. You can feel any imperfections that might need to be touched up. Yeah, that feels really nice. Okay, very good. There's our finished part.